Hey guys, so it's Kaylee from Shady Ladies Trading. In case you don't know and you haven't seen my other videos, I co-own the business with my sister. Unfortunately, she doesn't live with me. She lives about an hour away, so I can't uh, have her here with me. But today I kind of wanted to discuss some flaws and things you can look out for as a beginner beater. So let's get started. Okay, so some tips on beading and how to do it. I brought the very first hat band that I finished. Now, it took me a several tries, so don't feel discouraged. I'm repeating part of my last video, but please don't feel discouraged because it took me at least three times before I found a pattern um, and a technique that worked for me. So if you can see here, this is my first hat band I ever made. It's old, so it's really torn up and beaten up, seen better days. But, you know, this one, took a lot of practice, but as I'm looking at it now, there's some things I see that we could fix. Now I got another one that I made along the same time and some flaws on there we can fix. We'll use this one as the main example because it's easier to see on camera. Okay guys, so starting with this band, I see several flaws on it that we're gonna point out. The first one is, I gotta fly on my foot, sorry. The first one is the string color. Can you see it? It's white. White on brown doesn't look that good. It obviously stands out. You can see it. It's not gonna blend in well on a hat at all, as you can tell. So there's our first thing. I would recommend brown string. This is one of my first ones that I completed, so that's a beginner mistake that I made way back then. Um, so tip there match your string to the main color you're going to be using. It's just going to save you a lot of time. It's going to look more professional and give you a better finish and it's not going to stand out on your hat. As far as that goes, there's a few other mistakes that I see that I could do differently on this hat band. So something else that I've noticed on this one is that I have missed a couple beads. Well, I, I did note right here. So you can kind of tell and I've got other examples. Part of these beads don't, here, you can't see that on camera very well. Right here. So right here, when I was beading, I missed some of my beads and they popped out. And now, see right there, see that loose, oh, now they're coming off and they're falling off. It's okay, this one's a really old one. But anyway, the reason this row right here is missing is because I didn't get my needle completely on the other side, um, which allowed too much room for the, the beads to just flop around and do what they wanted. Um, that comes with practice. So when you're beading and you're holding your beads up, just make sure you're getting above that main string. When you get above those main strings and you're, when you're going through the beads on top of that those rows of strings and stuff, make sure you don't get under the strings. That's what causes your beads to pop out and then it doesn't look good, it looks amateur, everything like that. Um, don't worry though, if you do make that mistake, I have a good tip to fix that and you'll just have to kind of stay tuned for other videos, <laughs> co-starring my, uh, my beautiful shepherd back here. Anyway, um, those are a couple of the main things that I have noticed with these. My other thing is tension. Oh, tension. This one's a prime example of a tension issue. So with tension, if you do not pause and roll your beads down like this, pinch them and roll them down, they start to bunch up. And what I mean by bunching up is it starts to get all crinkly. See how it looks crinkly right in here, especially that's a tension issue. While you're beading on your loom and the beads are sitting on your loom like so, every once in a while you want to go and run your fingers and pinch it and go down. And it'll help uh, with tension. You do this at the end when you're tying it off as well. Just lay it flat on a table and run your fingers across it over and over until you have all of that slack and that or all of that bunchiness uh, spread out. Oh, here's another good example of missing a row of beads that we kind of discussed a little earlier. See, now the gal I'm training to do this, she accidentally missed this row right here so it's 
popping in and out and it's the center of the bunch. See that? That one row right there is all floppy because she she didn't get it on top of the main strings in here and you can see the strings right there barely but um unfortunately sometimes it's an easy fix i don't know if i'm going to be able to fix this one just because it's a little bunchy oh nope i might be able to it's an easy fix though if you catch that and it's a pretty solid hat band and you're like bummed about it um obviously you don't want to sell one that's messed up so if you do notice that push it back over put a little bit of string of the same color that you're using and go on top make sure you get it on top of those beads again and go back through and go up and tie it off um then you fix your bunching or your not your bunchiness you fix the fact that those beads are popping out there's just a few tips that I would tell the beginners to do as an expert now. I wish I kind of would have known some of those tips and tricks when I was first starting out. Um, they help a lot, trust me. And every little tip, it'll come in handy, I promise. And essentially, you'll begin to notice things and you'll begin to figure out how to fix things the more you bead. If you guys have any other questions um, or if you're practicing or you're in the middle of practicing and you have a question about a mistake that you think you made or how to fix something, comment down below um, and I'll check it out and even maybe have you send me a video and I can help you figure out how to fix it or whatnot. Feel free. I'm all ears and full of help. So I hope you guys have a good day. Thank you.